Okay, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rachachwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the Brother Taz of War from the GMS New Jersey camp and uh, here to feed the lambs, the sheep. And hopefully, with this lesson, you know, it edifies you, which the word edify means to build. Hopefully it build upon your faith, all right? And uh, we sure need faith, okay? Faith is key, man. Without it, you know, then you're not going to make it, man. Without it, you're not of the elect. Because our true, our uh, whole gospel is based upon what? Faith. And gospel means good news. So there's good news coming to us, all right, that was told from our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and many other the prophets, okay, that we were going to see salvation, Yahweh Shai said, when these things come to pass, you know, look up, you know, so what's coming to pass is what we have, the force of the RFID chip, the force of uh, vaccines, all right, soon it's going to be a, it's going to be a point where they're going to be going into Iran and, and calling it this third world war, U.S. versus China and so on, all right, their allies versus their allies is going to be a world war. But right now, you know, we're in the perilous times, which is evil times, bad times. And those bad times is Jacob's trouble. And right now, you know, you, you would think, you know, this is something we can handle. You know, it's not as bad yet, but it's going to get worse. All right. There's a lot of draconian laws being pushed. All right. Esau is forcing unrighteous decrees upon the people. You know, you should have heard about the HR 6666. They want to go into your home. It's a bill that they look in the past. You know, so it's really going to get ugly from uh, this day forward, man. All right. So anyway, um, maybe I'll title this lesson. Um, meditate on how powerful our Lord is. You know, when you sit back and you think, you know, upon the Most High, Yahweh, our Father. And when you think upon Yahweh Shai and how he was able to uh, get through the hell that he went through being uh, crucified, nailed to the cross. You know, it said that he basically he was like sweating blood, man. You know, being beaten, spit upon, abused, misused. How much more us? And he did it. All right. Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. All right. Let me start walking up out of here. Anyway, um, when you meditate, on how our Lord, you know, got through those things. It took great courage, all right? It took great strength, and ultimately it took the great faith in which the uh, Yahweh Shah had, man. So really meditating on um, the Lord, okay, and how powerful he is, you know, that you should understand that there's nothing impossible. Whatever we think of, all right, the Most High have already thought of it. And whatever we're not thinking of, that's more than likely what the Lord is going to do. All right. Now, when it comes to the prophecies, the Lord said, before things spring up, I tell you of them. Okay. And that's and that's definitely what he's done. But when it comes to us being delivered, going through our lots and whatever it may be to see salvation, we don't know. All right. We just got to keep fighting a great fight of faith. And that's very important. So think on how grateful and powerful our Lord is, man. And matter of fact, before I even read Nahum... Let me get the quick precept. This is Luke chapter 1 and 37. It says, um, for with the most high, nothing shall be impossible. Straight to the point. All right. With, with Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, nothing is impossible. So the Lord is going to do the impossible. And I give you another scripture. I give you another scripture. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, when the Lord spoke on the strangeness of our salvation so far beyond that they look for all right because no one is looking for uh the lord's chariots you know to come deliver them you know no excuse me the enemy is not looking for the lord to bring his chariots and to take his elect out of the world all right and that's an impossible so the lord is going to do the impossible so let's read here this is nahum chapter one bear with me Go as you can see, I'm in the park, so 
I'm trying to make it back to my car. I heard the Romans say by 7.45, every car got to be up out of here. So I'm going to try to speed this up. Hopefully, importantly, you're edified. You know, keep praying to the Lord for faith, man. This is Nahum chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of, Nin of Nahum, the Eskosite. It says, the Most High is jealous. All right, Yahweh is jealous. And the Lord Yahweh revengeth. The Lord Yahweh revengeth and is furious. All right. It says, the Lord Yahweh will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. You know, that reminds me of the scripture, I think it's in Peter's or Timothy, where he said he reserveth the wicked for the day of evil. You know, the Lord know how to reserve you. All right. He know how to keep you still. Okay. Unto the way of salvation for the elect. And he also know how to reserve the wicked for the day of the evil. To keep them in their lot for that great judgment that's coming. And that's what it's saying here. It says, um, it says, Yahweh is jealous and the Lord Yahweh revengeth. The Lord, Yah, uh, the Lord, excuse me, the Lord Yahweh revengeth and is furious. The Lord Yahweh would take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. And who's the Lord's adversaries? First and foremost, Esau, Edom. All right, they hate the Lord. They despise this truth. The Lord is not in all their thoughts. All right, then you have uh, the heathens. You know, they hate the Lord because why? They're not the chosen people. They play right along in a lot of being an Edomite, even though they have the other nation. Okay, so far on that they look for, you know, it tells you in limitation, they wag their head, all right? They not, they uh, they was glad at our fall, okay? Uh, also two, two thirds of the Israelites, okay? Because why? The Most High, Yahweh, all right? Having given them the spirit of understanding in this day. You know, going back into the time when Yahweh Shah was being uh, charged and uh, the Israelites gave him up to prompt Pilate. And remember what they said. They said, let this blood be upon us and our children. So a lot of these two thirds of you Israelites are being punished for that because you are the children of your fathers. Matter of fact, you are your fathers. All right, because according to the scriptures, reincarnation exists, okay? Even the elites, you know, the enemy know, uh, knows that. Esau eat them. So anyway, it says the Lord Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord Yahweh will have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. The, he rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languish and camel and Carmel, excuse me, and the flower of Lebanon languishes. The mountains quake at him and hills melt and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. All right. So that's powerful, man. It says the earth quake. Excuse me. The earth is burned at his presence. So the presence of the Lord is so powerful. You know, you got to understand why he told Moses, you know, no man could see him and live. Because if the eye, if the Lord focus on you with his you know, about his uh, bodily spiritual eyes and you look upon him with your bodily fleshly eyes, he's going to consume you, man. That's how powerful our Lord is, man. He's a, a pure power, the ultimate power, the most highest power you can ever be. Okay, his power creates life, creates other powers, small powers. And um, us, as is written in Psalms 82, all right, it gets into on how, what, where, we're a power as well. The word he uses God. And God in Hebrew is Allah, which just means power. So we're less of power, all right, over the other nations. And soon we're going to receive that power, all right? So it says, uh, the mountains quake at him and the hills melt. The earth is burned at his presence. It says, uh, yay. It says, the world and all that dwell therein. It says, who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide 
in the fierceness of his anger, the fury is poured out like fire and the rock are thrown down by him, man. So when the Most High get angry, in which it's written that he's angry with the wicked every day, who can stand against that? So when these Edomites starts, start going out to harm the Lord's anointed, as the scriptures say, do not touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm, you better believe the Heavenly Father's gonna be angered, man. Okay? Okay, let's read that again. Nahum 1 and 6. Who can stand before his indignation and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord Yahweh is good, a stronghold in a day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. So you see, this is why we got to rejoice, man. Be happy, man. So like, yeah, let me get past this music. All right, all right. So this is why we have to rejoice, man. Rejoice, man. You know, because our Lord Yahweh knoweth. He says He is good. Hey, who? Hey, Yahweh Shah said that. He said, "Who is good? But the Father. The Father is good. You know, we're not good because we're in sinful flesh. All right. Yahweh Shai now is good." Because he, all right, he finished his, his um, well, he haven't finished yet, but he did the first part of his job. And now he's up there in the spirit with the Heavenly Father. So he's good too now, all right? And, he's, and they both are good to us that trust in him. So it says, the Lord Yahweh is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. All right, and we're, we're approaching Jacob's trouble. We're in it. We're in it, man. And know if them that trust in him so the lord knows that we trust in him man you know don't think the lord don't know who you are where you are and what is what being done to you man all right the lord knows everything man the lord has our best interests man he has insurance on us man okay matter of fact the scriptures speak on uh having the insurance of faith okay we got insurance but our assurance is faith man okay we do these works to have that, that faith. All right. It says, but with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof and darkness shall pursue his enemies. So what's coming to Esau Edom? What's coming to these elites? What's coming to these two thirds, these wicked men and women? All right. Darkness, man. We read earlier, the Lord reserved the wicked. All right. Scoffers, scorners, scorning their delight. Proud, boasters, effeminate, all that shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Verse 9. It says, What do ye imagine against the Lord? What do ye imagine against the Most High, Yahweh? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time, man. Because Esau, after this, after you provoke the Lord, all right. Yahweh shall return, Edom will not rise a second time. They will not rise again. This is the second leg of their rulership since they were the Romans. Okay, we're in the second leg of Rome. All right. It says, verse 10, For while they together as thorns, and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble, fully dry. There is one come out of thee, that imagineth evil against Yahweh, a wicked counselor. It says, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet uh, thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now will I break his yoke from off thee, and will burst out bonds in sunder. It says, and the Lord Yahweh have given a commandment concerning thee that no more of thy name be sown. Out of the house of the most high, out of the, out of the house of thou gods, will I cut off the graven image and the molten image, and I will make thou grave, for thou art thou. It says, Behold, upon the mountains of the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace, 
O Judah, keep thou Solomon feasts, perform thou vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. Okay? He's utterly cut off. All right? Now, I had to speed that up because I got to get out of here. And I don't want to do the show again. All right? I hope this lesson is edifying, man. Meditate on the Lord and how things are to any, you know, there's nothing impossible to the Most High, to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? So, expect the unexpected. All right, so far, so far beyond that they look for, man. You know, and my spiritual antennas is up. You know, it's time to, you know, start fasting even more. All right, if you wasn't already, you know, it's for brothers who may be weak. You know, start being strong, being more confident, man. You know, pray more. You know, study more. Do more lessons. You know, pray to the Lord for more faith. All right. So don't be weak, get stronger. You know, it made the Lord strength for you. You know, I do this lesson, you know, uh, for myself first, all right? And then to others, you know? Because when we do these shows, you know, it be us, it be the Lord first, all right? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? To help us, you know, do as what is, as what is said. You know, the scriptures say, um, uh, how I go? Uh, Oh, what's good? What's up, bro? What's How good? You? I'm chilling, chilling. Uh, All right. Uh, scriptures say, uh, don't be unprofitable unto yourself. I, I got to look the scripture up, but I know, brothers, if you know that scripture, leave it on the comment board. Don't be unprofitable to yourself. You know, we do these shows and lessons for us first to be built up so that others could be built up. You know, so don't be unprofitable unto yourself. You know, you say all the good stuff, but then you ain't doing the good stuff, you know? So hopefully this lesson encourages you brothers that are weak, be more strong. Remember that the Lord does the impossible, all right, the way that he's coming. So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakat Kodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.